Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Inspired by Christ podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Goff. We got another great episode. Before we get going, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and share. This is going to be a great, great, great episode. Got another special guest here today, Brandy Floyd. She's a teacher and also an auntie. So we got to give a shout out to all the aunties out there because I know that's an important role. Um, so just welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Look, I'm so happy to have you on. I know we're going to have a great, great dynamic discussion. As you guys all know, with us just coming on, have this conversation, we just have it. Everyday, regular conversation just to bring people closer to Christ. So with that being the case, Brandy, let's just jump into it, get a little bit of background, know a little bit about you besides you being a teacher and an auntie, um, just to know a little bit about you. So what's your favorite part about being a teacher? Oh, I was hoping you were going to ask this. Mm -hmm. um, I blush talking about it because I it's definitely my passion. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite part is definitely the light bulb moment. You know, you look at the people you look up to, like whether it's a president, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a CEO or whatever, they all had educators to shape them. And I'm glad I can be part of that process, you know. So wow. when I'm teaching my students, I know my very, like my favorite part is when they finally, like when it clicks, you know, that okay. aha moment where the yeah. light bulb goes off. Yes. So I jump. I'm probably more excited than them when they understand a new concept. Like I, Evelyn's had to come down and say, Brandy, can you just, because I'm <laughs> so excited that they're learning, you know, so yeah. I'm glad to play a role in shaping their minds. That's awesome. That's beautiful. We need more people like you because, and we do have people out there that's like that. But it's like, you could tell instantly as soon as I asked you, like your smile just got big talking about the kids. And I know how passionate you are with that and that being a purpose for you. Like it just comes to you so easy. And then, like you said, I can relate with that with mentoring young adults, like just seeing that light bulb moment, like, oh, in the beginning, you tell them something, they don't get it. And when they finally get it, like, ah, like, so no, I, I definitely share that same sentiment. And it's a beautiful thing to have. So that's awesome. Um, in, re in regards to that, like you said passion, like, do you feel like that's like passion and purpose are like the same thing? A little bit off the topic, but just because you said that word passion, it made me think about it. Like, do you feel like that aligns with your purpose as well? Or is that a little bit different? I think for me, it aligns with my purpose, but I also think um, it's kind of situational sometimes, you know, like there's very subjective views on it, subjective to different people. Yeah. Um, I me it just happened to be my passion and my purpose mm -hmm. but I, sometimes you can have passions that are not directly aligned with your purpose yes that is very true and then so with the point like you said seeing the ceo seeing other people doing those things was there somebody that you seen growing up was there a principal a teacher or somebody that was like oh you know what that's i want to do that like i like the impact that person had on me as a student like did you have that experience Ironically enough, um, I grew up in a family full of educators. Like my mom is a retired principal. Like she works at my current university now. Wow. My aunt, teaches, brother teaches, everybody teaches, right? right? But, you know, I grew up seeing these black educators in my family, but I never grew up with them. Mm. Um, the first black teacher I had was when I went to an HBCU. And I was like, wow, like they love to learn here. There's people like me who actually want to be here, yeah. not because they have to show up or whatever. Um so I'll say it was my mom, honestly. Um, she oh. was always a great teacher. Even now, like, even if we don't see eye to eye, I know, like, I respect her and her profession, mm -hmm. the impact she's made. Like, even when she would come and teach, you know, children's church and Sunday school, mm -hmm. I, I was locked in. Like, I love to hear my mom teach. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely my mom. That's that's awesome. And you having that. So that's just basically like a generational blessing. Like everybody's an educator, a learner, because, again, to be a teacher, you have to be a learner because that's the only way you can be able to teach other people. And and that's for one of the reasons, like for with our daughters, like with me being a girl dad, like it was important for me to find a school, find a place where there are women in leadership of color. So then now they can see what you were talking about before, like, hey, oh, she's a teacher. That person's a director. They look like me. So now that's the normal. So it's not abnormal to see someone that looks like you in those higher positions. So I, I agree with you 1000% on that. Yeah, um, I don't agree. Yep. Yeah. Um, I had a question for you. So, all right, we know we're getting, we just wrapped up the summer. Like, what's your highlight of the summer so far? Or is it not it's over? Um... Gosh, I did so much this summer. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. I guess um, this year, and I've mentioned this before, that I've prayed for, like, female friends. Mm -hmm. um, 
for whatever reason, like I just do not have those. I did not have those strong, you know, female friendships in my life for the longest. Mm -hmm. And this year, getting to travel with them, getting to make memories with them. Uh, and I told you, I categorize my friends now. <laughs> I'm the friend for like everything. Like if you want to do it, I'm down. But like right. some friends go on a bike ride together. Some friends, let's go work out, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've really enjoyed making memories with my friends this summer. Like real genuine connections where I didn't have to walk on eggshells or, mm -hmm. you know, try to be something I'm not. Like I love the way that they've embraced me with like open arms. So I'm definitely making memories with my friends. That's that's beautiful. And that's one of the biggest things that I, I think I've learned to enjoy that more as I got older is like capturing the memories. Like I'm that person that's going to take a bunch of photos and videos. And sometimes I might not look at the photos and videos for a long time, but it's just that random moment that I might be scrolling my phone. I'm like, oh, or the, the memory pop up on the MacBook. You're like, oh, oh man, that was a good time. So <laughs> I, I'm the same way. I like to capture those moments and just create memories because I feel like it's priceless. Like I always tear that with my wife. Like I'm like, sometimes people look at the price and you're like, oh, like that's a lot of money. But to me, if it's going to create a good memory that's going to last forever, you're going to make money each time but that moment to have with a person especially because you know we just never know when our time is like you want to enjoy those moments so no I, I definitely agree with you like it's good that I'm glad that you got to enjoy your summer um my next question I have for you is um if you could I know you're a big music person I know that about you so I get this question I'm curious to see like who you would have so if you create your own concert with only five artists any genre who would it be? Like, who's going to be the headliner? You got to say who the headliner is, but then the other four people are just leading up to the headliner. So I want to hear your, your top five. Chris Brown is up there. I, they can never make me hate him. Chris uh -huh. Brown is up yeah, he there. He up there. He up there. Talented. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. um, so definitely Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Jasmine Sullivan. I'm a big R&B girly. Be on that one. Um, Janae Aiko. Okay. So um, maybe, yeah, maybe Mariah the Scientist, maybe. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna throw my gospel one in there. Um, probably Chandler Moore and okay. Naomi Rain. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a nice little lineup right there. Like soulful singing, but then we could turn up a little bit. Chris Brown. I see what we're talking about. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, I because I'm a huge Jasmine Sullivan fan. Like. Man, like way back, I just love her. Her her voice is just so soulful. Like she had me singing the songs I ain't really supposed to be even singing them about dudes, but I'm singing them. I'm like I'm right. the mix. I'm called the mix because I right. like I like the music. So no, that's good. I, I'm glad to hear that because I know that you listen to a lot of different tunes. You like the old school, new school. So that's good. Um, now my last question I have for you, just a, the background question before we go to the core questions. You, I know that you played a little basketball. You told me that in passing. So I want to know from your perspective, who's your favorite basketball player of all time? I want to know NBA and I want to know WNBA. Oh, gosh. You know, for me to have played sports for like most of my, you know, up until the end of high school, mm -hmm. I don't really watch sports like that now. Like I know the mainstream of players. <laughs> But yeah. like as far as stats, like I'd rather attend a uh -huh. sporting event than sit yeah. and watch it because I will fall asleep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I have a lot of respect, cliche answer, but Angel Reese, that's her name. Yeah, yeah. A lot of respect for her. Her mm -hmm. over Caitlin stats. But mm -hmm. I'm rooting for everyone who looks like me as well. I think okay, she's okay. great. Um Absolutely. and then NBA. Let's go. You know, there's Michael Jordan and there's Kobe and there's LeBron and there's that whole debate. I'm gonna go with Steph though. Oh, I'm gonna go with Steph. that was see you. You threw out all those three that you went okay. I, I respect that though because Steph Curry is definitely. I think that people are not don't realize the impact that he has truly truly changed the game a lot. And um, another thing that you said too about you playing basketball. My wife is the same way. She played basketball. But I can't get her to sit down and watch a, a basketball game at all. Like, not even a little bit. She don't remember the players. She's talking about <laughs> players way back in the 90s and the 2000s. I'm like, they're not even in the league no more. So, <laughs> <Wise. laughs> so, no, that's good. So, yeah, I just had to ask you that question. Um, but let's transition into the four core questions. So, this is the section of the uh, 
uh, the podcast where we talk about the how can we inspire people to get closer to Christ and share our testimonies. So with the first question I have for you is why did you give your life to Christ? Um, honestly, it wasn't like my decision at first. Mm -hmm. um, we've been going to this church for years, my whole family, since I was a baby. Mm -hmm. And I was like 11 at the time. You know, at the end, they say, okay, go ahead and close your eyes. You know, if you want to give your life to Christ, come on up. You know, no one's looking. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, you know, I'm 11. So I'm like <laughs> peeking, right? Like, his and I feel a heavy hand on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it was my dad leading me and all my sisters up the altar. And I was like, right in front of everyone? Right, right. Me? <laughs> um so initially it wasn't a choice mm -hmm. and I was a little annoyed with it at first I'm like oh my you know being 11 you just yes. I was like he made me go up here in front of everybody and now I have to go up there and get baptized in a swim cap and can't get my hair wet oh my <laughs> it was this whole big thing I right, was just, right, right. um and in my head I also saw it as a way of like you know it's my dad he's like my favorite person ever so I knew his intentions were good I was like you know 11 year old me was like you know this is his way of saying okay somebody's going to hell and it's not going to be my girls because mm -hmm. they're giving their lives to God today. Mm -hmm. um, and in the moment, I didn't understand that. But um, for me, I ended up getting older, of course, and really growing into my relationship with God. And for me, it took me questioning my relationship with God, questioning church. You know, I was like, is this just a business? Why yeah. do y'all need my money? I'm in college. I don't even make that much money. Why do you really need my money? You know, <laughs> what to do with it? Um like it just, I was like, this is a program, you know, it's just a business, wow. but I ended up coming, you know, take the religion out of it. Cause my church is still, it was amazing. Then it's amazing. Now, mm -hmm. um, taking the religion part out of it was what I had to do. You know, I had to go with God and really like choose God for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it couldn't be one of those things where it was like, you get baptized because that's what you're supposed to do. You're, you know, you raise that way. That's what, you, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, it had to be a choice. And for me, I had to figure out my why. And for me, it was because, you know, there's no one like God. You right. look around, you know, think of your favorite person ever. For me, it's my dad. He's never let me down per se. But, you know, you're not always going to see eye to eye with anyone on this planet. You're never going to agree 24-7. You're never going to absolutely love everything they do. But God is one that you can count on. God is one that you will, you won't agree with his method sometimes, right? But you'll know that he's doing it because of his unconditional love. So you look around and you realize God is the only one in my corner. You know, when you're off by yourself, the dad and mom are not there. Your favorite person is not there, but God is always. And you don't even have to say anything out loud. And for me, that was like a huge thing. So I was like, you know, um, even then, like, even if God is not real, we know he is. I know he is. Even mm -hmm. if he's not, you know, I believe in him. Mm -hmm. So when he, you know, comes to get me and it is my time, mm -hmm. I'm going to heaven because I know that I believe I'm not perfect, but I believe. So that's my why. That's that's beautiful to hear that. And I and I think one of the things you said so many great things. And one of the things for me that stuck out was like the religion versus relationship. And I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of people. Um, is that you can look at the religion, it's just basically the practice of doing something over and over again. You know what I mean? And so sometimes people get focused so much on the religion aspect and you're missing out on a relationship with God. Because once you get the relationship with God, now it's not looking at it like, like, oh, they taking my money. It's like, no, my relationship's so good with God that I'm like, I'm obedient to him. Whatever you do, that's what you do. Like, but again, I, of course, have discernment. Like, if you see you giving money and the pastor driving the Rosemary off front, no, you got you to gotta make it make sense. You know what I mean? The math ain't mathing. But I'm saying you have to be in tune with that relationship with God where he'll give you that discernment and say, hey, that's not the church for you to be at or you know what I mean? Any any aspects of our lives. And I think like that's the biggest thing that I realized in my walk with God when getting to that point similar to you. It was when I was younger. But when I got older, I had to get a relationship. So then once I got a relationship, now that like controlled my whole life, because even if I wanted to be out doing this stuff, I'm like, dang, yeah. it don't feel right. It don't feel right. Something still just is pulling me back. I'm like, oh, yeah. so, so. I definitely, I definitely understand exactly what you were saying. And um, look, I look, I, I'm the same way. You can't make people say in their mind, like, oh, is God real? Look, I know for myself that God is real. Like, and I know where I'm going, like you said, because if you believe, come on, man, the rest is history. So yeah, I love what you just said about that. I don't know if you wanted to add any more to it. Yeah. And what you said about, you know, the turning up, we've had conversations about it. Um I haven't been baptized again since I was 11. Um, I gave my life to Christ at 11, but still, you know, you get older. And 
I guess I'm kind of torn because I want to get baptized again um, mm -hmm. to give my life away to God again. Um, and part of me is like, you know, you sit in church sometimes and they say like, you don't have to come to the front, you know, but just repeat after me and you'll give your life to Christ. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, okay, this is my personal relationship. Like, I don't, do I necessarily have to go up there and get baptized in the water or is that for, you know, everyone else or is it for me? Um, and I think part, like I would want to go get baptized again. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that pulls me back is kind of what you just said. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'm not going to be perfect, but I also, I think about this regularly starting this year, actually, mm -hmm. um, once I've really started working on my relationship with God as a young adult, you know, you think about being outside and you think about going out and doing X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it before, like, where's the balance? And you told me there is no balance. God is not a lukewarm God. Mm -hmm. You're out there sin is sin. It's not like, you know, I love to say, oh, everything um, in moderation. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You get a little drunk only sometimes and you're still sinning. You know, right. if you go up right. and do it, you're still sinning. If I cut someone out on the way to church, that's still a sin, no matter how I try to go and, you know, doll it up at church. Mm -hmm. So I guess one thing that I've thought about over and over and over is like, I want to be baptized. But you think about being, you know, a Christian in your walk with God, you should be set apart. You shouldn't be doing the same things that you were doing when you weren't saved. You should be, you know, walk, walk the walk, talk the talk. Yeah. So I think about that a lot. No, and and that's true. And I feel like you're not the only person. We all had those. Everybody. That's why God tell us every day, pick up your cross. You got to pick up your cross every day. We have to die to self every single day. Because when you wake up, you can have the same temptations. You can have the same desires from the prior day that you that God allowed you to overcome. And then you can wake up the next day and have new desires. You know what? I want a bigger house. I want this car. I want this relationship. Or I want this career. Like it's more things can continue to add to that, but how do you cut it off? And that's where it happens where you said it's the relationship, because once you have a relationship, you, sh you should not want to do anything to tarnish that. Same if you're in a relationship, you have a boyfriend, you have husband, significant other. If you love this person, you're trying not to do anything to tarnish that. So that same thing is even on a higher level with God. If we if our relationship, that's the most important relationship that we have. That means that I don't want to do nothing that's going to make him feel any way, but we all fall short. And that's where, to me, through that relationship, it brings me closer to God because I'm like, yo, I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but you're still blessing me. You're still loving me. And I'm like, okay, God, that's the conviction. I'm like, all right, let me get myself together. Let me get right. So it's just like, it's just a, it's a journey. Like, that's all I can say. Just continue to keep walking that journey and building that relationship and it, it'll continue to keep pulling you and letting you know what you should and shouldn't do. And um, I, I I did the same. Like I said, I got baptized early on as a kid. I can't remember the age, but it might have been around the same age as you. And then I remember probably about four years ago, I got baptized again. And oh, that was recent. Yeah. So it was it was recent, like because something just came over me. I was and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to do it again. And I felt great, you know what I mean? And just, and then from that point, it got me like starting back up. I ain't perfect, still sin from that time to now. But it's again, building that relationship to say, yo, I want to dedicate it to you as an adult with this mindset where I'm at now and seeing what you've done for me and letting you know that I'm dedicated to you. So yeah, just pray on it. He'll give you discernment. He'll let you know what you want to do. You know that little nudge you come when you're at church, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's that time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah, it'll come. Um, so then now going on to the next question, how does Christ inspire you? No, I've had to pray about this one. I've had to really, I've been <laughs> all day. <laughs> I even Googled the answer and I was like, you know, I was going to come on here with some textbook answer. And I was like, you know, I was <laughs> watching <laughs> Courtney and Bree are watching. <laughs> So what it boiled down to, and it's not a glamorous answer, but it is the truth and it's my truth. Um, God, and it sounds cliche, but God inspires me to be a better version of myself. Mm. You know, they say you're mating, you know, the image of God and everything. Um, and so for me, that inspires me. Like it's again, cliche, but they used to hand out, you know, the little wristbands they used to hand out, yeah. WJD. No, yeah. really, what would Jesus do? Yeah. Would Jesus cuss anyone out? Would Jesus have the shortest temper or would he be patient? Boom. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> exactly right and it's it's corny and cliche but it's so so true you know you hear it all the time but yes. thinking about what it means I want to be more like Christ not like you know just like God or anything but yeah, you know no, I want to walk right. in his likeness um 
So for me, even, you know, with some of the things that I struggle with now, I'm like, no, God wouldn't do this, Brandy. And sometimes I, you know, that by the flesh, we get it. But, you know, being yeah. human still, you know, you're not supposed to do it. And sometimes you do it anyway. Right. Um, but again, that your relationship with God is kind of what convicts you and says, okay, but you shouldn't have done it. So go repent and try your best moving forward not to do it. Don't just say, oh, I'm sorry and do it over and over because you know you're going to get, you know, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that's definitely what inspires me to be, you know, more like him, to walk in his likeness. That's beautiful. I, I love that. And, that. and that's definitely not even a cookie cutter answer. That's the truth. You know, in the relationship that you have, you broke it down. Like there's those moments when we want to do a lot of moments where we want to do what we want to do. We don't want to do what God says to do. Like, but it, once we realize and as we continue to walk with God, when we realize that his path leads to everything that we need and we desire, like, you know what I mean? But I think it's Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be given to you. Like, you know what I mean? So that tell you right there, he telling you like, if you follow me first, I got everything that you need, but you're doing what you want to do. You create your own path. You're going through obstacles that I didn't have for you. So now you got to go through stuff. So and we talked about that on one of the previous episodes and just talking about choices that we make. So all the things that happen in our life is predicated on the choices that we make. And we have to look back and be like, dang, I was in that situation because of my choice. So that means that we don't make the right choices. We have to lean on God's choice. We have to be like, OK, God, what should I do right here? Even if it's at work, God, it's a quick prayer. OK, God, she just made me upset. What should I do? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm in this relationship. God, is this the person I'm supposed to be with for the rest of my life? Leave. Oh, okay, all right, God, I'm going to leave. The removal like, prayer. We can do on, it every man. time. <laughs> it work every <laughs> A little too well. You try to hesitate <laughs> to pray that prayer. Like, can I get to know him a little? No. Right. No, no. no. Right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the truth. That happens a lot of times for sure. Then look, sometimes like, no, God, you, you really want me to look, make a right. red, car, make a red car go by right now. Then I know that you really want me to do it. Like, right. like are you sure? Are you, are you sure? sure? <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, so next question, what advice do you have for someone who's on the fence about giving their life to Christ? Like you said, maybe they start out early and they kind of ain't doing it or they maybe just never really had any relationship with God. So what advice do you have for that person to say like, hey, you should you know, try God, give your life to Christ. I honestly think when a lot of people look at, you know, forming that relationship with God, it's like, they don't really look at forming that relationship. Again, like religion versus, you know, your personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. People look at Christians as hypocrites and as, you know, X, Y, Z, and people who are just judgmental and nasty people and X, Y, Z think they're, you know, holier than thou and just forget that, you know, judgment is still a sin to, right? And they condemn mm -hmm. everybody. I think a lot of people are pulled away from, God himself because of the, you know, self-proclaimed people of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that for a lot of those people, I would say, you know, don't look at anyone else, but do it for, do it for you. Even if it's just like, just give it a try. Yeah. Right. Because even for me, I've always been a believer, but at the beginning of this year, it was when I really, you know, focused on, you know, surrounding myself with people who are like-minded people mm -hmm. who are like you and your wife and your family and the other people that have, you know, are through your book club. Mm -hmm. like-minded individuals that want to follow Christ. I'm not used to having that around um, mm -hmm. at all. You know, you go to church and things like that, but you look at the people that you surround yourself with. And for me, you guys have helped me in my walk with God, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so forming that community and being able to, you know, I think that forming the community for me, at least, helped bring me closer to God. Not just necessarily because of you guys, but you guys were influential in, mm -hmm. you know, my walk with God. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny because, you know, you always believe in God or whatever, but then, you really start to work on your relationship with God and you really put the work in and you really write things down and you really focus and tune in mm -hmm. and you see things come into fruition. It's like, like, you know, well, I'm like, I know God, like, duh, do it. Right? Right, right. But then you see things happen and it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily because I was just, you know, looking at people in church and was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it because of you guys. I had to do it for myself. So anyone who is on the fence or whatever, I would definitely say at least give it a try because for me, I, gave it a try or whatever, you know, really put my trust in it in him. Mm -hmm. And my mind was blown. Even as a, you know, someone who's already a believer, my mind has been blown. It's stuff that, you know, I wrote down and I was intentional about, but God did it. Like I put my trust in God and he did it. Wow. And on top of that, goes back to what I said earlier, you know, if God is not real or whatever, and we know he is, but if he's not real, 
Um, and all this is for nothing. We're just placed here to live, die, and that's it. That's the end of our story. There is no afterlife. There is no, you know, eternal life or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I believe, okay, well, I've still tried my best to, you know, be the best person I can in God's name, of course, but just be the best person I can. Mm -hmm. And I've lived life. Yeah. Um, but if God is real, mm -hmm. and he is, right, mm -hmm. and you don't believe, come on. I'm not going to be that person that's going to say, okay, you're going to hell, but it's on you. I'm not going to be that person because that's yeah. wrong. Yeah. However, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you don't have anything to lose by believing in God and believing in God includes, you know, being a good person. Yes. God is not nasty, judgmental, criticizing God. Right. Mm -hmm. um, people say, oh, YOLO, YOLO. I'm going to do what I want. God might not be real. So YOLO. you only will live once if you keep doing what you're doing. Hello. You're not going to turn away. That's um, not to you know beat anyone over the head with the bible but there's nothing to lose by you know putting your trust in god i think you have more to gain anyway yes so that'd be my advice i i love i love that i love that like how you broke that down like if if god is not true versus if he is true like weighing those scales like really understand like what's at stake and it's your soul if you don't, <laughs> if you don't give your life to Christ, your soul is at stake. And like you said, it's it's more upside when you do do it because you know what's on the other side of it. It's eternal life. So I love the way you broke that down. I'm not even going to try to touch that because that was great. The only thing that I yeah. want to say is the part that you said about writing things down. And <clears throat> like I said, for even for me, I'll probably say the last seven years like really just like okay like let me lock in and doing what god want me to do and even probably a little bit before then but i would say the last seven years seven eight years and i'm going through the process of when we were going to church in tennessee and um like being a part of the groups like pushing myself out of comfort zone like i'm gonna join the men's group i'm we're gonna go to the, the marriage group we're gonna do this stuff me and my wife just getting into this stuff and realizing that power of community that you were talking about. And so that's why we love to be able to help you because you look where you, you're going. You're going so far in life. You're going to go so far in life and God has so much in store for you. Why would we not help somebody like you? You know what I mean? Like the role model that you are for the girls. Like, so that's just a full circle moment. As much as you think we blessing you, you blessing us at the same time. But then also to the power of the fellowship, mm -hmm. being able to be in that situation where you can be around people who are like-minded, iron sharpens iron. And um, so I just thought about that as you were saying that. And then the, the other part that I was saying specifically about when we were going to church in Tennessee, we should do vision boards. We mm -hmm. still do vision boards to this day. Like we have all of them for the past seven, eight years. And we talked about this yesterday. I kid you not. And I said, yo, I tell my wife, I'm like, yo, you remember with that thing we put on the vision board? Like, like that happened. Like we're mm -hmm. being in it. And to your point, blown mind, because when you're doing a vision board, you're just like, you take anything from a magazine. I want this. I want that. Yeah. It's like, wow. Like when you really sit back and you really count your blessings and see God do the things that he does day in and day out, you like, man, like God is unreal. Like people just have to try. Him. So just wanted to say that, like I said, because you just said a lot, but it just triggered some stuff in me, which I know is going to trigger for people that's listening too. so. A lot of great stuff. I um, appreciate it. Yeah, you already know. It's all love. Um, last question I have for you. Um, what's your favorite Bible verse and why? Oh gosh. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, maybe it has to be the one. Say it again. I said maybe you might have a couple, you might not have one. See, when I was looking at this, I was like, Randy, try not to think of one that everyone, you know, does. <laughs> But it's definitely the one that's talking about walking by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we, I've mentioned this analogy before, you know, you put your faith in a lot of things the other day. You mm -hmm. put your faith in your car that, you know, you're going to get from, from point A to point B safely, that it's not going to break down on you or whatever else. Mm -hmm. You can't see that every, you know, moving piece in that car is going to work, but you trust it. You yeah. put your faith in the chair that you're sitting in right now. We're putting our faith in this good old Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. That it's not going to drop an XYZ. You can't see what's going on, but you experience it and because you've done it over and over and over and that's how your walk with God has to be putting your trust in him regularly um you know because you put your faith in it over and over and over it's real to you and God that's how it is for me God is real um so that's definitely one of my favorite verses 
Wow. Wow. I love that. I love that because we sometimes we forget like these things we do every single day that we just without close eyes, blind look like we trust and know that these things are going to happen. But to your point, just again, only no reason we know that is through repetition of keep doing the same thing. So we have to continue to keep going back to God. So that's that's beautiful. That was the last question I have for you. But I also just want to open it up to see if there's anything else that God has put on your heart that you want to share with the people or anything like that to inspire some of the people listening. I am good. I think you've got it. I think we covered it all. Yeah, look, I think we did too. This is going to be definitely a great episode. Like I said, I just want to tell you, thank you again for coming on, providing this inspiration for the people. And to everybody that's on, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and share. You never know who needs this inspiration. Until next time, we'll talk with you guys then. Peace.